What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today's video is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a deck profile, however, it's not going to be my deck list. Okay, let me explain. So basically, I was at Locals the other day and my friend Phil actually came first place at our Locals and he was actually playing Branded Despia Adventure. However, I didn't get the chance to do a deck profile with him. He hit me up though and said, hey, if you want to showcase this list on your channel, you can go ahead and do that. So in today's video, that's what we're going to be showing off a first place Branded Despia adventure deck profile big shout out to phil for letting us use this deck list to show off to all the spanko squad but if you guys enjoy these kind of videos make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu -Gi -Oh content just like this one we upload five days a week here on spanko deck profiles combo videos dual replays product openings all that good stuff you'll see it right here on the channel so make sure you're subscribed to tune into all that good stuff now i don't want to keep you guys waiting for too long i'm really excited to show you guys this deck profile because it's pretty saucy i won't lie so with that Let's get into the profile. All right, so just before we get into the deck profile, I just want to go and explain a little bit more in depth. So as I said in my intro, my friend Philbert came first place with this exact same deck list, and he pretty much gave it to me and said, hey, I want you to show this off on your channel. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to be always down for content. Plus, it's a really cool way to showcase tier branded in a very competitive way. Of course, he came first place at our locals, but also the really cool thing about a list like this one is that it's different from your typical tier branded list, right? So let's get right into it. Of course, we're playing Taylor and Sheeran. We're playing three Hoffinus as well as three Merly. So three of each of the tier names, the important tier names that you really want to mill. And then we are playing two of the Rhino Heart. So this is the perfect tier limits lineup for a deck like this one. The really cool thing about this deck is of course, you're going to be milling with your tier limit cards, which is what you want to mill, but you can also mill a lot of other really cool cards. Cards. like let's say you mill something like your branded opening that's just protection for you right you mill your Suleik, which of course we're playing three Suleik, by the way as our tailorman's card this card is insanely powerful you need to be playing three in a build like this one and then we're playing three of the perlerino as well as the one terraforming so this is the perfect tailorman's ratio and according to him so i'm going to say this because again i didn't play this this was my friend phil this is just according to him according to him these are the best ratios because you get to see the names as fast as possible with this deck but rhino is the worst one to mill and you actually don't want to see rhino as much in this deck because you are playing the brave packages you guys can see so for that reason the normal summon effect is actually not as powerful as in a pure tier limits build for example right so this is it for the tier limit monsters then for the branded engine we're playing a little bit of a smaller branded engine we're playing two aluber one aldaz as well as one albion this is all you're going to need the really cool thing about this list over here is the fact that again you're playing the adventure package so you don't want to actually normal summon these but you have access to your branding opening which is going to get you to your alabar as fast as possible we're also playing two brand infusion again we're only playing two it's not a full on branded package and again the reason for that is because you are playing tier limits at the end of the day right so playing three fusion is kind of bad because you're going to be milling your fusions more often than not here you have a lot of consistency because you can get to your alibers as fast as possible get your branded fusion out of the deck and then you're in a really good spot we're playing of course three branded opening with the adventure package you want to be playing this because you want to be special summoning your luber and then we're playing three branded in high spirit this is a card that's really cool because it actually works really well in the tier limit decks so if you guys don't know or haven't seen this package before i'm sure if you play tier limits you may have but for anyone who doesn't know this package essentially lets you dump the des frog or the d3s frog which is really cool because it's an aqua monster for you that you can use to fusion summon with but what this lets you do on top of the fusion summon is it gives you access to your albion to your hand which helps you fix your hand it also gives you access to be pitching your tier limits monsters because they're all aquas so it guarantees you essentially a fusion summon just with this brand in high spirits so that's why we're playing three of the high spirits then we're playing the adventure package like i said earlier so we're playing three of the water enchantress one Griffin Rider, two Rite of Artemisia, one Faithful Adventure, as well as one Draco back. So I actually purposely asked him why he's playing the two right over the three right. Why didn't he max out on this? Again, essentially the reasoning behind it was they're actually bad cards to mill. Again, if you're going to be milling with your tier limits cards, you don't want to mill your rights. Milling the Water Enchantress is perfectly fine because if you mill this, you can activate this in the graveyard, get your right, and you're perfectly fine, right? So that's why milling the Water Enchantress is really good. However, milling something like a right is not as good. So you want to maximize the ability to mill your tier limits monster while also minimizing your chances of milling the other engines right plus if you really can you want to get through your engines before you even use the tier limit stuff because if you go through let's say a branded opening into an alibur into a branded fusion into you know like a, a rite of artemisia into your wandering griffin rider then you get a bunch of cards out of your deck and then once you start using the tier cards you have a lot more tier names in the deck that you can now mill right so that's why you're just minimizing as much of the engine but also optimizing your chances of getting the tier monsters in the grave and then he was playing three gamma as well 
as one driver. So apparently these four cards are the last four cards he played in the deck. So actually, before we get into that, I'm going to explain that he played one Instant Fusion and one Shadal Beast. I actually kind of asked him, isn't Beast kind of a brick? But he actually really likes it. It's also not a bad card to discard off something like Branded Opening. So in your hand, it's not that bad. If you mill it, it becomes even better because you get access to Shadal Winda. And then of course, we all know how powerful Instant Fusion is. So now I want to talk about the Gamma Package. This deck is actually 40 on the dot without the Gamma Package. So he said, if you guys want to try it, you can try it without the Gamma Package. But he really liked this package because there's a lot of cards in this deck that can get hit with an Ash or other hand traps where Gamma is live. So let's say you activate your Pirlarino and then they Ash this so they don't get a tier monster in your hand, then you know you can Gamma. Same thing if you use something like your Branded Opening and they go Ash or your Branded Fusion and they go Ash, you can go Gamma. And then even something as similar as just going Ash on the Terraforming, whatever it is, there's a lot of situations where you have no monsters on the field, your opponent can hand trap you in some way, shape or form, and then now you have Gamma for that, right? So Gamma is really powerful. There's times where you have tier monsters in your graveyard and nothing on your side of the field and your opponent will attempt to DD Crow you so that you know you don't get the tier limits effects off. You can also Gamma that as well. So that's why Gamma he said was very, very good for him. That's why he decided to up it to 44. It also stops you from drawing like three or four tier names in your hand that you can't really do anything with, right? So that's why I think these ratios, or he told me that's why these ratios are working the way they're working. Very, very consistent. Then moving on to the extra deck here, we are playing two Kikalos as well as one Kaleido Heart. Pretty standard in all tier limit decks. Then we're playing the one Mirror Jade and two Lubelion. So I actually asked him why is he playing two Lubelion. He's not playing Albion. Of course, you guys can see we're not playing any light monsters or any relevant light monsters for Albion. But the reason I actually asked him why he was playing two Lubelion is because he was saying how if the first one gets negated, so he's playing the second so that he can go into his Mirror Jade either his next turn or he has more access to his Mirror Jade. He didn't want to lose to a single Lubelion getting negated. So that's why you're playing two. He's also playing the one Albalenidus. This card is really good because this is also the card that you're going to want to send off of Mirror Jade because when it is sent to the graveyard, you can add a polymerization or a fusion normal spell from your deck to your hand, which means that you can actually add the instant fusion. You can add another branded fusion. So that's why Albalinidus is in here. And then we're playing two Draco Stapelia. Draco Stapelia, of course, is just very powerful in today's format. The one Mud Dragon, the one Winda. Again, if you mill the beast, you can get to Winda. The one D3S Frog. This is for your branded and high spirits. The one Dark. Dark is just a really good card overall in today's format. Of course, you can steal any of your opponent's monsters from their graveyard. And then it has a floating effect when it's destroyed. You get to search a monster to your hand, which is really powerful. One Baguska as well as one Dweller. This is just to counter the other meta matchups, right? Specifically, if you're playing against another tier limits matchup, you can go Dweller and then your opponent is going to have a tough time playing through this, right? So that's it for the main deck and the extra deck. Then this is the side deck that he played at our locals. Now, again, side deck is always dependent on your locals. However, he said this is a really generic side deck that can really work against the any locals. And with the meta today being a lot of tier limits, especially post banlist, because you guys can see this was a post banlist deck, right? You're not playing Red Reboot. You're not playing Fairy Tale Snow. So for that reason, this is the most generic and the most appliable post banlist that he said that he could come up with. So we're playing three Sphere Mode, three Nibiru. Of course, we all know why these cards are really, really powerful. Three Cosmic Cyclone, Mystic Mine is still a thing. You need to out the Mystic Mine. You have three Evenly Match, which is really good against back row heavy decks or just decks that make really wide boards without any negates. And then we're playing three Skill Drain. I actually asked him why he's playing three Skill Drain. And he was like, all the effects really activate in the graveyard. And then when you summon your monsters on board, even if you don't activate their effects, they're all really big beaters for you. So you start playing beat down with Skill Drain. And most of the time, it actually hurts a lot of your opponents more than it hurts you. Of course, in the tier limits matchup, maybe you don't do this as much, but against other decks like Sprite and whatnot, decks that use monsters on the field for their effects, Skill Drain can be very, very powerful. So that's it for the deck. Again, shout out Philbert. He will always be able to explain this a lot more and a lot better than I can. I was just giving you guys my thoughts, but also his thoughts on why he played this deck the way it's built. I think this deck is very spicy. I think this is actually the sauce. I'm going to be honest. If you don't want to play your typical tier limits build, this may be the way to go because you're playing the tier limits engine. You're playing the branded engine, which I, I love the branded engine myself but you're also playing the adventure engine which is really cool because when we were testing you can pretty much always put up griffin rider before you full combo right even if you don't draw into the water enchantress or draw into the right if you mill the water enchantress then you're getting access to your griffin rider which means that you're not going to get hit with something like a nibiru right so that's why i think this deck is really really powerful i think it's a really really cool concept again this deck came first place shout out philbert thank you for letting us show this deck off and i think you guys should definitely try it out for yourselves so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy that's branded despia adventure honestly when i saw this deck i was like how does this all synergize but we did do a couple test hands at our locals and i was like wait the synergy in this deck the consistency of this deck is insane he didn't drop a single game that entire locals so 
If you go XO and just 2 0 everyone, and it was all against meta, like he was playing only tier the entire day. So you can imagine if you're playing against the meta and you're going XO 2 0 everyone, I think this deck is very good. So shout out Phil, thank you for letting us use the deck profile. If you guys who are watching, if you guys did enjoy, or you guys want to see more content, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. Like I always say, we upload five days a week here on the channel, all kinds of content, everything you guys can imagine will be here on the channel. So you guys should check it out. Make sure to stay tuned. I appreciate every single one of you. We're on the road to 10 k we just hit 7k we're on the road to 10k i know we can make it happen so thank you guys all for watching with that spanko signing out peace